All right, well, this is now, I guess, kind of our fifth video in this uh, Adobe Animate Basics series uh, for the 2018 version of the program, but it's a lot like other versions of Adobe Animate. It, uh, I'd say the program kind of changes at a glacial pace here. It's like Photoshop. You know, they add stuff, but the core of the program is, is has been the same for a long time. I've been using this for about 20 years now, if you can believe that. That is actually true. And uh, in, a, in a lot of ways, I still draw the same way that I always have, uh, which is mostly using rectangles, ovals, and I mix in some lines uh, to kind of separate some things out from time to time, or occasionally I'll draw to begin with with a line. Um, but, uh, but it is a really cool uh, drawing program, and uh, we're going to focus in on just kind of this little section over here uh, for drawing this video, and I'll, uh, I'll try to get into some stuff that I never, I, I rarely talk about because I just don't use it. Uh, but uh, yeah, let's get back to the basics here. So uh, I'm going to grab a, uh, an oval tool, and actually let me just move this, let me clean up the timeline real quick, so kind of boot kind of working off what I had before. Uh, let me just put in some extra layers. I'm just working on a, on a layer that's separate from everything else. And you can see, all right, here's the oval tool. Uh, this isn't hard to figure out. You've got uh, your fill shape over here, which is actually separate from the line surrounding it. So I can select this guy, move it off. Uh, I can select the, uh, the line separate. I can bump up the stroke a little bit. I can even make some nice little changes to the, uh, the style of the stroke. Even uh, now in the uh, more recent versions of the program, you can change the, uh, the width of it. So you can do some cool little tapering just right off the start. Uh, I, I'm kind of wishy-washy at times about whether or not I like, I like what that does. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of the basics. Um, uh, for just getting a, either a rectangle or an oval out there. And uh, you'll notice that if you were to go and take this fill shape and then just kind of drop it on top of the line over here and then let go, it's actually chewed away part of that line over there, okay? And uh, that's kind of an important thing to note, uh, basically combining one shape over top of another one. So for example, if I was to copy and paste this and make a, a different colored uh, circle and then just put that over top of here, then I move it off, it's, it's now eaten away at part of that shape. But again, these are sort of things that, um, that, that benefit you drawing-wise if you, if you just basically keep them in mind and you know how to use them. Um, if, if you don't remember that uh, and, you, and you expected this circle to not get eaten away at, well, then it's going to just drive you nuts. And there are ways of, of kind of making sure that doesn't happen. Uh, one option over here is to turn on object drawing. But this draw, well, where'd it go? That actually draws uh, drives me nuts having object drawing on because it basically makes it seem like everything has been turned into a symbol. And we just talked two videos about that. These aren't really symbols, okay? Uh, it hasn't made this shape in the library over here for us. Uh, so anyway, and it doesn't kind of benefit from the, um, let's say the, the instance usage of uh, symbols. So I would highly recommend you turn off object drawing and just kind of get, get used to the rules of this universe. Okay. So, uh, let's take a few more steps back over here. If, um, if you, if you made a line like this, right. And, um, you know, you go over here and you hover on the side of it, you'll notice that I'm actually moving around one of the vector points that's defining this. If you did want to see those vector points, you could switch over here to your sub selection tool and, and keep an actual eye on them. Uh, but again, as, as I kind of introduced this video, uh, the series, uh, I, you know, I tend not to use that. I like to just sort of, you know, kind of feel my way through them, treat these like, you know, pieces of putty almost. Uh, you can add vector points if you need to. You can hold down the option key to do that. I believe it's the control key on the PC. And, uh, you know, you can, if, if there's part of this you don't like, just delete it off, right? And then just kind of, you know, bend out a new shape uh, from there. But you can use things like the, uh, the pen tool to add and delete um, anchor points or vector points on here. And of course, you can just start off by just drawing with the pen tool to begin with. So you can see, you can just kind of come through here, make a new little shape like that. I didn't have to start with a circle to do it. Uh, and of course, you can just start with a nice old straight line and start bending this guy around. Uh, again, using just the main selection tool over here, you just hover to the side of it. And if you're anywhere between two vector points, and for just a line, you only get two of them to begin with. Uh, you, you can, you know, you can just kind of bend the whole thing, arc it or whatever. Uh, and then again, like I was about to start mentioning, you can delete out anchor points too. So I could go over here and just start deleting out chunks of this. And when you begin manipulating it, um, 
uh, or begin with one of these tools, it's gonna, then going to kind of switch you over to showing you uh, the, the vector points that you're you're messing around with, right? So you get an idea of what's going on with those. And at times, you know, that can actually be good. So for example, if we've got a, a circle over here, uh, and, and a circle I believe is defined by four vector points, uh, so you could go over here and select this and basically delete out, let's say, that one over here. You begin kind of, you know, in a, in a sense making an interesting shape by subtracting from a circle. And I guess I was totally wrong about how many vector points make up a circle. That looks more like eight or so. Okay, so <clears throat> let's get rid of um, this. Let's uh, move over to the, what should we pick on next? All right, oval primitive. This, it's really rare. I, I mess around with this tool and you can see I was just messing around with it. Let's go and, and set the, um, all the start options back to, to basically zeros, yeah. And okay, so we've got an oval primitive over here. Uh, let's uh, let's get rid of. I was gonna say let's get rid of the stroke on it. Oh, never mind. All right, just leave the stroke on, and uh, and let's adjust the start angle. So we can you can see you start getting these like Pac-Man type shapes uh, when you mess around with uh, the start and the end end angle, and then the inner radius. You know, suddenly you've got some donut type stuff going on, right? So, uh, you know, if you needed that shape, <laughs> this is one way of going about it. Uh, and then let's say you wanted to kind of edit it further. You can go over here and break it apart. So it's now kind of no longer this, uh, what they're calling an oval primitive. And you're back now to just this being a, you know, a fill shape that you can uh, manipulate separately. And you can see that now you've got just your, your line over here for that. Uh, let's suppose you wanted to uh, convert a line to a fill, okay, right? So with, with the with the strokes, you can see that when I start bending them around, obviously it's taking the whole line with it, or it's making, it's keeping with a uniform line over here. Uh, but you don't have to do that. You could uh, select the whole thing. So I just double clicked on it. You can go over here to shape, convert lines to fills. And now you've got yourself a fill over here that looks just like a line. And you don't notice the difference until, until you start messing around with it like this. But, you know, this gives you some nice little tapering options. So, for example, if I just kind of subtly move this in a little bit, you know, now I've kind of done some of my own tapering on this guy, right? And uh, at times... That's exactly what you want, right? Uh, so just keep that in mind as an option. You can uh, you can also, if we're going to play around in here, you can go to shape and uh, you can soften fill edges. Uh, that's kind of an old tool that uh, uh, was more useful back before we had the the blur option in um, in for filters. But you can see that it just basically does exactly this. The neat thing about it is, look, it's, it's actually making you these little independent shapes within here and each one just kind of has the transparency knocked out of it so there's a uh there is something to be said for it. Let's take this back out again. You can also go over here and uh, you can expand fill. I do this so often. I do have a hotkey for it. Uh, so, and expand fill is a little misleading because at times you can also just inset it. So it's the opposite effect. So I'm going to choose inset. And you can see it made it, you know, just thinner around both sides of that. And uh, if we want to expand it, obviously that's the opposite. So it's, uh, so yeah, that's that's a really useful one. Um, uh, let's see back. Is there anything with the draw? Well, in terms of the rectangle, you can do, you can, um, you can do some rounding on the edges like that. So if you bump that up and the same thing's possible, if you use that rectangle, rectangle primitive tool, you can just kind of do it after the fact by, you know, kind of, right. So again, things that I don't find that useful, but it is an option. And speaking of not that useful, here's a polystar tool. Uh, you know, I guess it's okay at times, but uh, to, to dig around inside of here, go over here to the options, right? Uh, and then you can switch it to a star. So that's probably, I'd say, what's, what's most useful about it is making some star type shapes. And let's bump this up to 32. That's the max. Let's try 0.2 for the other option there. And then you get some things like this going on. Okay, so at times, yeah, you need that shape. You know, it's certainly a lot easier to, to do it through the Polystar tool, but, um, you know, how often are you doing that? I don't know. Um, and then we've got the uh, the pencil tool, okay? Kind of a clunky little tool there. It almost looks like it came out of uh, the 1990s in terms of what it's doing. You, um, I would... 
<laughs> I wouldn't mess with it too often. And then the uh, the paintbrush tool and the brush tool. These, um, you know, I think if you were using a Wacom tablet with Adobe Animate, uh, these are going to be a lot more um, useful. And uh, let's see, why did it do that weird kind of stipple effect over there? Smoothing, draw as fill. Okay, well, that's an interesting one. Yeah, you can just kind of draw straight as a fill. Um, that, that, that's actually probably more what I would use that for if I use this, but I really don't use it that um, that often. Make it a little bit bigger. So yeah, you, that's obviously a fill that's coming in there. But um, but uh, but again, I don't uh, I don't have a, uh, a. I mean, I do have a Wacom tablet somewhere around here. Um, but, uh, I've got the holder for a Wacom pen on my desk. There's no Wacom pen, but, uh, yeah, I would say just, um, you know, mess around with these on the, on the, on your own. It, um, you know, it's kind of doing exactly what it says. It's making some brush type stuff. You know what? I guess the only time I really get into this is if, uh, let's see here. Here's a cool example. Let's say I wanted to do some sort of spark type effect, right? Let me give myself a few extra frames over here. So... I'm going to zoom in on this. So I'm going to start over here. And yeah, actually, if you guys hang on just a little bit longer in this lesson, I think you might actually find this kind of useful. So let's go with like a... So I'm just going to kind of squiggly draw this out here. I might even make this a little bit less. Okay, right. Now, I'm going to hit uh, F6. I'm going to get rid of that. And then I'm going to kind of continue this little spark effect going around him. And if I wanted to keep an eye on the previous frames that I had drawn, okay, actually I'm going to hit F7 right here, so it just makes a blank keyframe. Uh, what I could do is I could uh, turn on onion skin outlines, and you can see you get a sense of what you've drawn before. Okay, so keeping an eye on, you know, this was the, the beginning of the last one, so maybe this one I'd want to start over here, All right? Hit F7. This time, start over there, all right? Can I keep it going? And then I can swing this kind of, make it seem like it's coming back around under the underside of his uh, face. So my end point on this one, I'd probably want to keep right about there. And again, do the same thing. You know, maybe end this with uh, some little sparks at the end of it over here. Uh, and then, obviously, turn off onion skin outlines, and you can see you've got this, you know, kind of neat little spark effect going on. Uh, if you wanted to preview it like that, like a, what I just did, I just did a test movie over here. Uh, and then, you know, if this, <laughs> if we are... <laughs> I guess this kind of gets into the drawing side of things too. We did talk about filters in a previous video, but um, uh, you can only apply a filter to a, uh, a movie clip. So uh, what you'd want to do here is hit F8 on each one of these, and I would just really quickly use the hotkey, just go through each one of them. Hotkey, hotkey, F8, F8, right? Oops. And then once you've got, got that, go ahead and lock this layer with all of your uh, original stuff on here, okay? And then go over here to edit multiple frames. And see these little handles over here? Those, those are picking out the frames that I get to choose from. All right, so I'm gonna select all of them, okay? Uh, then I'm gonna go over here to my filters. I'm gonna turn on glow. I'm gonna set this to a nice, fun little blue. blue, uh, blue. And then I'd probably take the strength up quite a bit. Maybe even set the quality to medium or high. Let's do a little bit more. And let's play around with the blurry just a bit. Okay, so once you've um, kind of got something that you think you like, go ahead and take a look at it, All right? And now you've got this nice little, uh, I, would, I would even glow that a little bit more, I think. Let's see. Yeah, so. Uh, <laughs> that's my number one use of the brush tool, but I know animators that love using the brush tool, um, with Adobe, uh, animate. So I don't want to knock it, uh, too much. It's just, uh, you know, I, I like drawing, uh, with the, uh, with either the oval or the rectangle and, and to work back on this a little bit. I mean, so one of the things I'll, I do a lot of the time is, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll delete out portions of shapes, you know, to kind of get where I wanted to be, right? Um, I might even, you know, if I was going to do that donut type shape, I would probably uh, copy and, and paste in place 
uh, an identical shape on top of this and then just change the color and get rid of that like so. Uh, you know, if I was going to do that kind of that Pac-Man effect, let me just make sure that this is, there we go, that we saw with that uh, oval primitive, I would do something like this. Okay, so I would just unite two lines together and, and basically just make a separate shape that I could select out of those. Uh, and uh, yeah, and that's, I, I kind of let off by saying I use a lot of the, the oval rectangle and the line together and that's exactly how I would do it. Something like that. So, uh, I guess, uh, yeah, I guess we've probably talked enough this video. You know, I teach tons of drawing videos with Adobe Animate. So if you want to get real detailed with it, that's, that's kind of the, the place to go. Um, so anyway, I think you guys have a good idea of what is going on in this little section. And hey, you even got to learn a little bit about the uh, edit multiple frames and the onion skin outlines options. So there you go.